And we're live. Morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Shout out to Esser and Odetta. Thank you for being the first one in this morning. Angel D is right there. Thank you for being here. Good morning, classmates. Angel D says, happy turkey day. Shout out to King Biggs. King Biggs, big up yourself. Thank you for being here as well. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers. Shout out to the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town and long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guards. Shout out to the school teachers, even though today is no school because today is Thanksgiving Day, Turkey Day. We'll talk about that in a minute. Shout out to everybody who got to go out to work, even though it's a holiday for many others and they get to stay home. You still got to go get it. We know what that feels like as well. Shout out to every single clean hearted, good hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. You're a good person. Shout out to you. Shout out to the people them who really don't have much this Thanksgiving. Some people have a lot, some have little, some don't have at all, and they're hurting. So we keep those people in our mind today as we have our family time. It ain't even about the food and the, you know, the material possessions and stuff. Some people don't have people, <laughs> that part. Some people don't have people. So for those who do this whole time, and I know, I know, some people are going to come on right now and say, I the white man something that me not know Thanksgiving thing. So flow, you know what the Thanksgiving something mean and all that. I, 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 I know the whole history of that and um I know how that part goes already. But like I've said before, I don't really glorify any of these holidays, but I do celebrate them because I have a family and my children are already in it. You know, this is a time of year when everybody actually can get some time off from work. So we link up at one person's house and cook some food and eat. And not that we're celebrating what we're told to celebrate, but we're just celebrating each other. And we're celebrating being able to be around each other, right? So shout out to the people who have no food. Or should I say no food? I said shout out to the people who have no people. No people. Because that's the most important part right there, man, is the people. Some people don't have much food, but they're going to go make it do what it do. But they will have great laughs and they will feel loved and they will feel appreciated because they have people. Right. So some people know I'm the people to them, my friend. We have each other, though, because here we are right here. Right. Olika St. John says, yep. And that's sad. And I hope everyone has a friendly and safe environment. Yeah. And we know that's not so. We know there are a lot of people out there right now that don't have a friendly and safe environment and they don't have enough food. And they don't have people. Some people are alone right now. Just to switch up a little bit, the not the monotony, but just to switch up a little bit, the feeling. Come and start feeling depressed right away. I'm like an empath. I kind of take on other people's uh, feelings kind of thing naturally. Just, this is just me getting to know myself as a human being, right? I find myself, people tell me them sad story, I'm going to start crying. And I'm like, yeah, big man, man, stop the crying. But it's a natural thing, right? I'm able, I realize that as I get older, that I'm able to actually put myself in other people's situations. So I break that up a little bit, so I'm going to continue on just on this sad mode. You know, I see people in Florida <laughs> that's homeless. And I always say to myself, if anywhere I want to be homeless, or not want to be, but if God forbid I should ever become homeless, then Florida is a good location, especially where I'm at in, <laughs> in Florida. I'm going to go on the beach in the evening, and I'm like, let me go take in the, the, the sunset, right? It looks nice. The sunset over the water and stuff change the color of the water, especially summer evenings when that red sun be going down over that blue water. That's just me enjoying nature and life. You should see the homeless people here. Daytime, they don't come out. They don't bother anybody on the beach. So you can't be like, ah, the beach full with a bunch of homeless people. You know them ones that are homeless, drug addicted, dirty, just look like you don't see them during the day. Evening time come, beach them there and they carry a tent and then pitch them tent and they sleep right there on the beach and the weather is nice. You open your, it's all about how you look at life, right? Because if I'm pitch, pitching my tent on a clean beach 
open my tent door and water right in front of me, clean water. I'm like, that's luxury. And I don't have to get up to go to work in the morning. They don't have to get up to go to work in the morning. Them not have no responsibility, no light bill for pay, no nothing like that. So all on how you look at life. Veronica Gale says, if you have people and no food, go house hopping. Mm, that's a good one. If you have people, you can hop to their house. <laughs> America is a funny place, boy. One thing about Jamaica, you know, every house me touch food daddy. Every house. And I don't have to tell my Jamaica. When I'm in Jamaica, I don't have to tell my family I'm coming. May I come over? You just show up. And you haven't showed up to their house in years. And you just show up. And you're welcome. You want something to eat? We're on here. Cook some food, you know. Why when we come a foreign, we just change up? Why? You reach foreign, you have to call and text and set a, a date to show up. And, and everybody can go to somebody's house. House hopping. I'll be house hopping in Jamaica. I can't house hop here. Me don't know nobody. Nobody know I'm at them yard. Or I have to set an appointment to come over and kind of thing like that. But I understand still, you know. Life is different in, in America or life is different overseas. People busy them up on them schedule when they finally get some downtime. Them want them downtime. So you better text or call before you come. Don't just be showing up, ringing off my bell. It's just a different kind of feeling. I love not working and living in Ochi. Sarah Cayente. Sarah Cayente, big up yourself. All the way from down under. Sarah Cayente says, I loved not working and living in Ochi. BM says, I'm going to make a big pot of red pea soup with chicken foot. That is what I feel for. Good God. Yo, I fell in love with that soup, you know. I swear to everything. I just told wifey that. And she said she can't make it. I mean, I tell her that she can't make it. Well, I'm going to... Cause she's never made it for me before. She's never made it for us before. It's the... I was in Jamaica. I went with it there. First time I discovered that soup, I was in Portmore. Portmore. And my brother said, soup. I said, what kind of soup you have? He said, red pea soup with, chick with cow skin and chicken foot. I said, cow skin and chicken foot in a red pea soup. I never have that before. It make no sense. But give me some. Why? I fell in love. I think now that's my favorite soup. Cow skin. I love cow skin anyway. I'm only my mom cooked me my cow skin. But cow skin and red peas soup with chicken foot in it. Bad piece or something. If you never tried that before, go try that. Was there any retaliation to the prairie double murder? Sarah Cayente, that double murder, um, since you asked, we could get that out the way. So they found, is it Prairie? A Prairie? No. In, 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 um, they brought one person into custody. You talking about the two little boys, the school boys coming home from school? Donna Davis say you can't just run to someone's house uninvited. It's true. It's true. And I accept that. I, I kind of like start to feel the same way too. Because I mean, living overseas here force you to be like more defensive than anything I would say. You know, I come from a time where if no sugar no there the yard, you know, Megan Pande, Megan Pande land, I wouldn't even say fence. Megan Pande, you know where your land meet your neighbor them land? Yeah. I'm a call out, right? <laughs> no, no, no sugar. <laughs> Give me some. If you don't have no sugar up here, you, you dog near me supper. Matter of fact, here, if you don't have a dime and the thing come up to two dollars and you have a dollar and ninety cent, you have to find something else to buy or walk out of the store. That's not how it is in Jamaica. Well, not where me come from. That's not how it is. That was back in the day, Darlene. My my part of Jamaica never changed. That's why I'm in love with Jamaica, because my part of Jamaica never changed. Up till today, we didn't get nothing fancy, nothing new. My wife could tell you. Ask her about which part him come from. I'll make sure tell you. She, way up in the hills. Everything we have is built by us, owned by us, people around us yeah we have a bank 
We have two bank. We have juicy beef. As uh, that's as far as it goes. No, ain't no Burger King, Pizza Hut, all the fast food stuff that took over Jamaica. All the all the new people with them new store and uh, all that. It's we still not like that. In my part, we still the same old, same old. Beg some sugar next door, and yeah, and all that. Ca call out from way over here, so oi, morning, Mars Cleavy. Evening, sir. And we, we nothing changed. And that's why I love going back there. Because I feel like I went back in time, only that I'm bigger now. So I have a greater appreciation for everything now. You have to be respectful and say, come, say I'm coming by. Mm -hmm. Not not here, not my place. You know my place, Magana, everybody yard. Not, not, I'm well, now, now we have cell phones, right? And everybody has cell phones. So you pay common courtesy. And if you've been living overseas for a while, you kind of got acclimated to living overseas. So the same practice that you do here, you take it with you there. But I'm telling you, me pop up on anybody there and nobody is rejecting me. And we get food at every house. <laughs> and when we go, every single house. No matter what time of the day it is. If I arrive in the morning, me I get breakfast. If me arrive in the day. Matter of fact, some of them won't even let you leave without eating. No man, come on, eat something, man. Like that. They won't even let you leave without eating. So that's them. Are the, you, you, all notice say uh, today is Thanksgiving Day, and these are actually the things that are worth giving thanks for. Seriously, that is Jamaica for me. That's that's me. Love. That's how I love Jamaica. That's why I love it so because me just drop anyway in anybody yard anytime midnight. If I if I show up late night, some kind of get together go on some party some something. If people are asleep, then we just pass. Go our next yard. Go to our next yard. If I show up morning, like I said before, breakfast, midday, lunch, food, something I cook, evening time, early dinner, and them now make you left. Even if you're like, all right, me have to go now. Me, you know, me, me have to reach so and so by so them. So man, the food soon done, man. Hold on, get something for you eat first, and then you can go on. Might not see you again for a long time. That are them vibes that me love. What's up with Vicky Victory? Where's Vicky? Wasn't expecting to see you on this morning, so flow. Why you know some? Uh, I should be. I was delirious this morning because I've been doing this two days now. Uh, stay up all night for two days. This is my second day, <laughs> and I didn't think I was gonna make it this morning either. But you know, I have some things to do in the background which I don't really speak about, so I get them done and then jump back on this. But I couldn't let today pass. In the spirit of giving thanks, right? I want if I want to answer Sarah Cayente first. I didn't forget your question. You asked about the double murder in Prairie. I'm wondering if you are talking about the teenage boys, or not teenage boys, but the seven and nine year old boys. Them Sarah, the seven and nine year old boys that were coming home. No, okay. Well, I don't know about the double murder in Prairie then. That must be something else. Okay. But in the spirit of giving thanks, because you have, right? I want to share a story with you about a brother who... Because believe it or not, there are a lot of Jamaicans right now trying to get out of Jamaica. As much as I speak good about Jamaica, and you know, I want to tell you one thing about Jamaica is that life is expensive. Jamaica has gotten really, really, really expensive over time. Really expensive over time. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. 38 year old. Mm -mm. Don't know the follow up to that one. The man with the tattoo and the 48 year old one. You covered the story first, but you, I understand. Yeah, I covered it, but there was no follow up. So I didn't do a follow up yet. Usually whatever stories I cover, I follow up when the follow up comes out. Call me follow up the news. So, and me follow up people on social media who give you information too. But I mostly follow up uh, first-hand news. So anyways, a mother said, if I even him ashes, she was determined to bring home some remains of her son who died trying to cross Mexico into the U.S. through the Mexico-U.S. border. I was telling y'all I saw a documentary 
and the documentary they had underground tunnels. Yes, Sarah, you can call. They had underground tunnels, and I said to myself, I would have to stay in Jamaica, coming now going to one of them tunnels there. No matter how bad things is, I would have to stay in Jamaica and try to make it work if that was my only way to, to go. Well, here's a, a real-life story that recently just happened. Yesterday, there was a headline that says 14 Jamaicans were caught at the border. There's a whole story with that one that I'm going to tell you all about in the back of a pickup truck. This story right here is about a young man who was trying to do the same thing. He was trying to come to the U.S. I'm getting a telephone call from your child. Imagine getting a telephone call from your child telling you that he's about to die. You're helpless because you can't dispatch anyone to help him because he's in a foreign land without friends, family members, or anybody to care for him. This is the cruel reality of Jennifer Grant Harris. Faced with her second-born child, Jermaine McPherson, he was 34 years old. He called his mom on WhatsApp and told her he was dying. Jermaine had traveled from Jamaica to Mexico with hopes of crossing over into the United States of Mexico. His mother said that, his mom said that he was in search of a better life. And even though she attempted to dissuade him from making the trip, you know, Jermaine, don't go. Jermaine, it's dangerous. You can lose your life or do them something here. He's a father of two. He was just looking for a better life. And he decided to try his luck anyways. Mommy, pray for me. But may I go try. In fact, his mother only learned that he had left the island of Jamaica on March 14th of this year. She didn't even know he, were, he had left already. When the video, when she got the video call, he, it was from Monterey, Mexico. Their conversation was one no parent ever wanted to have. It never looked good when we see him. We have to thank God for technology, you know, because imagine you on the run, basically. You're trying to cross over into the U.S. Ill illegally or should we say, you know, that not the traditional way, a dangerous route. And you cannot, and your phone have battery, and you can't access WhatsApp. You can at least see your people face one more time. It was them kind of situations. So the mother said, "It never looked good when we see him." He said, "Mummy, me sick, you know." And me tell him, "Say we are pray for him, so I must just hold on." He said, "Mummy, me now go make it, and me must remember, say him always love me." Him tell him mother say I'm sick. Him mother say, hold on, man. Him say, me not go make it. Just remember, say, me always love you. Her voice was cracking. Soon it gave away to quiet sobbing. And she related to the next few minutes, moments of the phone call. The video feed by this time had disappeared, but the mother could hear what was taking place in the car in which her son was traveling. She said a woman who spoke with an African accent was in the vehicle at the time her son supposedly took his last breath. Me hear when she said his eyes are closed and he's not breathing. Me said, Jesus Christ, my picnic I got dead now. Confirmation of Jermaine's death came via Jamaica's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Portfolio Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith, speaking to a post-cabinet press briefing, said that the young man's body was found on the streets in Mexico. Y'all remember when I did this? This was one of the stories we spoke about uh, a while back, not too long ago, about crossing over and Jamaicans trying to cross over into Mexico. And then if you go back and look, just type in Jama um, body of Jamaican man found on the street in Mexico. This was him. This was him. So I'll show you his picture in a minute. So this is the follow-up. So this is how I do these stories, right? I search for the follow-up when the follow-up come out to stories I've done before. So 
confirmation of his death came that way. He was regrettably an unidentified person found on the streets in Mexico. And his family had no idea where he was. And the persons who were supposed to have been traveling with him became uncontactable by the family. She said that the government would be working with the family to bring his remains back to Jamaica. Harris said that she was told that her son died from complications of an ulcer in his stomach. An ulcer in his stomach. She does not consider the finding strange because she said he suffered with stomach issues for years. I guess one of the things you want to learn is if you're going to make that trek, right? If you're going to make that move, you better be in good physical condition. Wayne Cor says, but plenty more died after him that they didn't tell them where the people are. Um, that didn't tell their people that they were going on that journey. Hmm. Well, we'll get to that because them just get 14 of them in the back of a pickup. So his mom said, him no same sick from out here and him have bad stomach. It was a rough journey for him and him never did a eat. So him get sick and that was it. It looked like he died on the way to a hospital and the driver realized and just throw him out of the car onto the sidewalk and left him there. Grant Harris said that she had been told that her son's remains will have to be cremated because it is in an advanced state of decomposition. She told the Jamaica Star that she got the opportunity to view his body via a video link, and she is determined to return his body to Jamaica. If I even them ashes, me want it. It's four of them me have, and he is my second child. But me and my children, them really close. Me love all of them. I know he was going to look a better life for his family. Not because him make the wrong move. Me can't just give up on him like that. His body decomposed, so me can't get it. But me rather put down his ashes somewhere. I know say him that, the grieving mother said. Listen, I don't know if you saw my story on the other channel now about the funeral home that they found with 190 bodies that had been stored up for about four years. A lot of those people that went to that funeral home, they went there for their loved ones to be cremated. One woman walked around with a picture of her son and his urn with his ashes in it. And everywhere she's traveled, she's traveled there because these are the list of places her son wanted to travel while he was alive. And he didn't get to do it, so his mom is going all these places, making it her life goal, her bucket list, and bringing his ashes everywhere with her, only to find out when that funeral home got busted, one of those 190 bodies was her son's. So she's saying, whose ashes have I been taking to all these places in this urn? And then more people started coming, finding their mother stored up there, decomposing slowly for four years. They found their mom is there. One guy found his dad. Another person found their uncle. People are coming by now and identifying their family members. So um, I would just say, be careful what you get back. Because, you know, them could have just buried me in a mass grave in, in um, Mexico and send you some chicken ashes or some animal ashes. Or you won't know the difference. You won't know the difference. Wicked, wicked world we living in. Yeah. She said, if it's, in me, if it's even them ashes, me want it. My son was a good person, you know. He was very loving. On Mother's Day, me cry because him would have been the first one to call me and big me up, and nice me up. He used to sell a coronation market, and him always said, boy, life hard, and him want a better life for his two children, and for me, his mother. Him 10-year-old son don't even want to go to school from the incident happened, and his 16-year-old just graduated from high school this year, and not even pictures 
Jermaine is going to be able to see. He just wanted to make life better for us, she said. Now, the funeral home in Mexico has quoted a price. This is the price to release his remains. Approximately 457,000 Jamaican dollars, which works out to be about 3,000 US dollars. This is for the handling and the cremation of his remains. Grant Harris said that she has managed to come up with 1,500 US dollars so far, which the funeral home requires as a deposit, and she has no idea how she's going to come up with the rest of the money to get his remains. Sometimes I feel like I got block out. I want to go to the doctor, but I have to use the money that I have to pay to help to get him ashes back here. Them say me need to deposit half of the money, which is 1500 And then by the next week and a half, I need to find the remainder of the money to get the rest of ashes home. I don't even know how I'm going to do it or how that is going to come by. Now, wife, should it set up like a GoFundMe or something? Um, Wayne Core, that's exactly what I'm saying. Because that's a small number. It's not like one of them cases there where the person has said them have cancer and a 60,000 US for, and they're trying to raise 100,000 US, even though I've seen people do it, but it never normally works for our people because our people aren't that giving. You will have people give, but them not give up to no, you know, like exorbitant amount of money, thousands and thousands. So this is him right here. So we put a face to the name, right? And that's him right there. Yeah. Could have been me. So we can't say rest in peace yet. We want to find out if the mom actually got around to getting her son ashes. Because they'll hold on to it until they're able to pay for it. But that's him. He just wanted a better life, man. Father of two. And I guess him feel like him couldn't get that in Jamaica, you know? It's sad. I guess boy, it, brother feel like him couldn't get that in Jamaica, so... You know, everybody's trying to get out, get somewhere where they can get something. So we give thanks on this day because we're not in that position. Yeah, that's the sad part. She seemed like she don't understand how to do it. Somebody says, OMG, that's so sad. When course said, boss, please set up a GoFundMe and monitor it for her, please. Um, Yeah, when core, uh, we could, we could, but I would have to get in touch with them first. Yeah. I'm very funny with money handling. I don't want nobody call me name and I know scandal or nothing, you know. That's why y'all notice people still come to me and ask for help, but y'all notice I haven't done it in a while. Like, ask for some money and send it to somebody. I normally do that. I normally do that, but I realize what our people are doing as well, which is quite damaging. And it's a, it's a delicate balance. When you try to build something and you have to deal with the tear down at the same time, and you can't ignore it because it works. They're tearing your stuff down works. So it's a constant fight. You know what I'm saying? It's a constant fight. You have to answer this and prove that and answer this and prove that. But, yeah, she have more problems than we do. So put yourself aside and look out for somebody who needs it more, right? And I, I, I respect that. I feel that way. I'll try to reach out. They didn't leave a contact or anything saying how to reach her or nothing. So I'm going to try to reach out and try to see if I can get a contact for this lady and find out what the situation is, the status is. So far, hopefully, we could be a part of helping her to get her son back, at least. Sad situation, man. It's just reality, though, you know? It's just reality. So, with that came another story. And the other story is, Jamaicans found in a pickup truck near Mexico border after they were deported from Belize. But hear this. Shout out to the loop for this one. Jamaicans are seemingly finding more ingenious ways of getting into the United States as a group suspected of attempting to illegally enter Mexico from Belize was deported from that country last week. 
Now that group was nabbed. They caught them. I made an increasing reports of more Jamaicans illegally entering the U.S. through that North American country's border with Mexico. Over the weekend, so Belize is one of them places that where I think even recently uh, they had talks about banning Jamaican travel to Belize for a while because it became a hotspot for if you want to go to the U.S., go through Belize first. And I, I forgot what the other strategic move is. There is no direct flight from Jamaica to Mexico. So them got Belize. I believe if you're going from Jamaica to Mexico, I think you have to, the plane stops over somewhere else. So Belize, jump off at Belize. And then, I, I, or from Belize into Mexico. I don't know how it goes, but... Belize was having a problem and Belize was complaining about the amount of Jamaicans that were coming, flocking to their country and then disappearing, not going back to Jamaica. They were heading into the U.S. because Mexico was complaining that they were coming through Jamaica. I mean, through Belize. Anyways, over the weekend, a group of 14 Jamaicans were deported from Belize as authorities in that country suspected their involvement in using their country, Belize as a potential gateway into Mexico. The group included 11 adults and three children. The Belizean government had previously spoke, see, the Belizean government had previously spoken about finding means to ensure that Belize is not used as a transient point for people seeking to get to America. Belizean authorities in November 10th intercepted the Jamaicans near San Pedro village close to the Mexican border, traveling in the back of a pickup truck. When the police attempted to stop the truck, the driver got out and ran and got away, leaving the Jamaicans stranded in the back of the truck. The group had initially indicated on immigration forms that they had itineraries for accommodations at various hotels in Belize. However, Upon investigation, authorities discovered that they were not at those locations they said they were going to be at or they were staying at. The adults charged with willfully supplying false declaration to an immigration officer were brought before the Belizean court last Friday. The charges were dropped after the Jamaicans signaled their willingness to return themselves to their home country voluntarily. So they dropped all their immigration charges and self-deported is what it's called. 11 adults, 3 children. Again, it's rough out there. Rough out there for a lot of people, you know? And again, it's Thanksgiving Day, so we give thanks because we have an abundance and we give thanks. Don't have everything, but I have everything. You know what I mean? We don't have everything, but we have everything. We didn't hit the lotto. We still haven't gotten that one million in a lump sum yet. But we have everything. We have health. We have good people around us that actually care. We have things. And we have someplace safe and comfortable. We give thanks. Country Girl says, I always wonder why people put themselves in such danger until my mom told me her story of how she got to the U.S. So Dorothy T., Respect to you. This is what I try to tell people all the time. If you never grew up a certain kind of way, you probably can't relate to it. So when you hear me tell some gruesome stories sometimes, like if I say something like, I know communities in Jamaica right now where young girl walk through that community, she have to be with one of the man them in that community. Like, Man a gunman, man a bad man. Yo, hey girl, come here. And it's just a bad man, why are you? And if you never grew up like that, or if you don't live like that, or if you've never been to anything like that, who could figure that in 2023, right? 2023, in a beautiful island like Jamaica, most people, like I said before, romanticize Jamaica and think the plane landing, the cool breeze, some cool red stripe, you know, or some rum and something and good ganja and nice this and nice that. Them don't know about ghetto life and zinc fence lane and 
certain kind of liberty that people have to live with. So when you see people desperately doing things to get away, it, it's, it's not because they just want, oh, let me go try to see if I could crawl through this tunnel that somebody dig under the ground for how many miles just to see if I could get into somebody else's country. It's because them are run away from sufferation, real sufferation, right? Real unsafe conditions, dangerous conditions even. So because your life don't set up like that, you have it good. And you can't relate. And some people try not to relate, you know? Oh, they must sit down and behave themselves. Stay at your own country and do this and that. But if you never lived that life, man. A, man. a wise man said, you don't know what hunger is. You know how we sit down in our, in our house and we said to ourselves, say, boy, I feel hungry. I hear my kids say that. Man, I'm hungry. I'm like, none of us in here know what hungry is. You're not hungry. The cupboard, the, the, the pantry is full of food. The, the fridge full of food. Nobody tells you no for anything that's in there. You can literally go get up and yam out everything in there and nobody would say nothing. Nyam till you can't eat no more. You're not hungry. You don't know where hungry is. Hungry is when you haven't eaten nothing for breakfast because ain't nothing there. And you don't have no money to buy nothing. You haven't eaten nothing for lunch because ain't nothing there. And you don't have no money to buy nothing. Dinner time come. Remember, our brother, um, he was a deportee and he was trying to get back on his feet in Jamaica. Man, no, no breakfast, no lunch. And he's living in one of these kind of communities. So they didn't even have space to like grow stuff. And the man have some chicken run around the place and the chicken them lay eggs. And him go take up the egg them and him fry three egg. I eat the three egg and that's dinner. Right? <laughs> He said, boy, I just beer bush tea and ganja because ganja grow around the place. So, you know, I burn some ganja and some bush tea and keep myself. Me I said to myself, said, boy, I couldn't burn no ganja because ganja give you munchies. And me would have hungry all the time. I already don't have no food to eat. But these are real conditions that people live in. Veronica Gale says, when you have to buy a slice of bread and a squeeze of toothpaste, you understand. Ah, talk to them now. Hey. Half a pound of rice and a tin of mackerel there. Yeah. Can't trust me till Friday. Them there. If you don't know about that, you don't know. So when you see people running, trying to make it, risking it all, they rough out their ear. Drink salt water and lie down for your belly for stop. Make the noise and pray for sleep. Let me tell you my real life story, right? I remember I know I mean I grew up poor enough. Well, I grew up um pretty good, uh, my Jamaican part. And everybody is doing good now, all praises to God. But there's one time I remember my mom. My mom had two slices of bread and one, sli and one slice of bologna. Oh, four slices of bread and two slices of bologna. And it was me, my mother, my brother, my sister, four away. But this is not foreign enough. Where you can't beg nobody nothing. Four slices of bread. Listen to me. Two slices of bologna. We are looking at each other in the house. I'll never forget this. I'm living in Miami at the time. I'm real young. Fresh come a foreign. I'm, I'm, I'm look, we're looking at each other. Because I'm not used to that. You know, they are Jamaica. My grandmother, them food in abundance. I come from Clarendon. Farming community. Food can done. Walk outside and pick, eat up fruits till your, your belly tired. And still go eat your big plate of food when you're done. So that four slices of bread and two slices of bologna. And I remember her, she made one sandwich with two slices of bread, one bologna. One next sandwich with two slices of bread, one bologna. Two sandwich and four of us. She split the two sandwiches in half, right? It turned into four pieces. Piece for her, piece for my sister, piece for me, piece for my brother. Drink water. Wally papa pipe water. Go out your bed. That's it. So if you don't know where hunger is, you don't know where hunger is. And I tell us, you know, you have a lot to, I have a lot to be thankful for. You know what I mean? Because far man I come from still. And it was just one of those things in life. It happened. Happened. Some people can't relate because they never had to go through it. But it is what it is.
Dorothy T, your mom just wants a better life for herself and you. So I hope that you're not mad at her. I often ask my mom if she regret leaving Jamaica, and she says sometimes. Hmm. People had to do what they had to do. My parents had to leave me too. Uh, so I'm, I relate to it firsthand. I was a barrel child, first of all, for a while. Because my parents gone. And then I try and make it. You know, and my grandparents, God blessed them. And man, I, I was blessed. Because my grandparents was the kind of people that was like, no, leave my grandchildren them. You go on. You go, you, when you fix up and you fix up properly, then you can come get them. So I was secured. I was secured. But some people don't have that. Some people run gone left them little picnic. A predators run them picnic, you know. Uncle John John, I rip off the little girl as soon as our mother gone. And that's his sister's child. And them, uh, these stories are too real. Too true. Yeah, I was spoiled. Wayne Core, I think I got spoiled too. I don't know who else in there did spoil, but me me get spoiled too. I was good. Country girl says, my mom always, she has quantity of life here because it goes a long way. Yeah, the dollar goes a long way, but people in Jamaica has quality of life. They just can't see it. Not everybody in Jamaica have quality of life. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. Unless you've been on some rough ends, you don't understand what I talk about. Hey, one time, you know, I see this video and the brother said, we don't have no running water and no toilet around here in my G. The toilet, them, a pit toilet and them back up, full of shit all the way up to the top. Nobody can go in there, be a fly in there and the place hot. Them ask him and they live somewhere in a town that close to some dump where the, there's a wall and then over upon the next side is a gully. The man said, we just shit in at the bag them and tie up the bag, the scandal bag them and throw the shit over the wall. I would tell it that. I'm telling you, y'all be thinking, if, some of you been doing good your whole life, so you really cannot relate. So even when you try to use your mind, you still can't understand levels. Yeah, parachute. <laughs> Man should say a parachute. The one said, we just shitting at the scandal bag, you know, shitting at it till it's full car. Scandal bag, you know, go get them one every minute. You want to shit three times a day, you better have three scandal bags. So you're shitting at the bag and save it. And when you want to shit again later, you save it. By the end of the evening, now when you are going, they say you flush tile it to tie up your bag and you throw it over the wall. In the gully. People live like that. People, <laughs> people live like that. All right. Weird course that I was. But I was always complaining that they can do better. And my mom said to me, wait until you start having your own kids. Darty T says, my grandparents protected me well. I was spoiled so much, so I never left Manchester until I was 15. Yeah, when them come to Jamaica and ask me if me were ready to go, I said no. I did. My dad said, well, uh, you're going anyways. I said, okay. Didn't have a choice. <laughs> but my choice asked, you you ready to go? I said no. That was my initial no. And if it was up to me, I would have stayed. If it was up to me, I would have stayed in Jamaica. I would have never came. I would not have been raised in the U.S. I would have stayed. Wayne Cor says, my son told me that I had it good after he visited my mom's house in St. Anne. Mm. Wayne, where was your house at? Country life, good enough. We're not talking about country life where people... Like the house, no fancy like your U.S. apartment or your U.S. house. We're not that people just make the house stay so car. They make the house stay so. We don't really run down upkeep of house and all these things, but food in abundance, happiness in those houses. You know, you have togetherness and all these things. So we're not talking about country life. We are talking about poverty life. Bamboo sent on. Yeah, sent on a real country place. <laughs> Me, that's a real country place. Like my place up at Clarendon, they had a real country place. Hey, if you want more about country, ask me. In the bush, back of the bush, ask me. All right, listen. Stacey and Williams said, My mom sacrificed a lot for my sister and I. She left us with our grandparents. 
and we were good because you did lucky. You was blessed and lucky. You had grandparents that actually cared about you. Yeah, man, that's why my grandparents, man, everything, mean everything to me. Trust me. Because if it wasn't for them, I don't know. I don't know. And they poured their all into us too. You know, them really poured their all into us. You know, some people, they'll take your kid, they'll be like, yeah, me, hold the picnic them till you got to start out yourself and come back. And then you're there, but you're not there. For us, I think my grandparents must have looked at us like we were their children's children, so they had another chance to do it all over again and do it right this time or don't make the same mistakes or something. I don't know. But that's, we were super loved and super taken care of. That's why I made it think I'm rich. I thought, but I was rich, is what you call riches. Not rich in material things, but I was rich. I'm Pembroke Hall in Kingston. Stacey and William say, yes, so Flo, very blessed and lucky right there in Clarendon. Yeah, man. Them people that would have killed for you, you know. They would kill for you. They would die for you. That's the kind of love I'm talking about. Nobody couldn't do with nothing. I grew up well secured. Never had to worry about where a meal was coming from. Never had to worry about if somebody was going to do me something. None of that. I had no worries. Really had a childhood. Run and play. Wild. While in the bush, play till you're tired and dirty, beard out a door. All these things that we had an inside bathroom too. But my grandparents' inside bathroom was for the people that would come from foreign or the people that would come from town or something like that. We beard out a door. Had a real life. I give thanks, man. I give thanks. My grandmother used to do us bad. Whenever we didn't do any homework, she feel the cat and the dog. She would feed the cat and the dog your food. <laughs> no, my grandma and I did nothing like that. Mm -mm. She would have feed me parts of like chicken butty and stuff for me never like eat. And you know, you grow up in a damn time that whatever is put on your plate, that's where y'all go eat for dinner. So me grow up like that. So whatever it you know, me and wifey I laugh about that the other day because our kids now, right? When we're cooking, Kai and Milani. They'll come in the kitchen, or even Naka, the other ones, they'll come in the kitchen. What's what, what's for dinner? What y'all cooking? If it's a brown stew, uh, buy some brown stew chicken, rice and peas. Uh, so them fierce going on? Uh, you're like, what? I don't want that. You don't want that? What do you want? I want something else. And we're looking at each other like, look on them pick me a door. Is, is this okay that we're doing this? Is this okay that we're allowing them to do this? Cause I know so we grow. We didn't even, we knew not to go in the kitchen and ask nothing about, wait, what's for dinner? Ah, who you? Move. Are you a picnic to? Move. Anything you get, that's what you eating for dinner. When you smell the food I cook, see ya? I think a chicken that my fry and I smell like fish or whatever. But whatever comes on your plate, at that you eat. You don't like chicken foot? Sit two chicken foot up on your plate. You don't like the chicken body? The chicken body up on your plate. Hey, don't get up unless you finish eating that, you know. Yeah, finish up everything on your plate. Finish up. I'll finish it up too. Scrape off with bone and all that. And then we give that to the dog them. My grandparents used to actually boil corn, turn cornmeal for the dog them. Turn cornmeal with... Me not lie, me think me probably grew up with some luxury because I had a helper. Um, and we, we use the word helper and now people try to make it sound bad. Don't call nobody no helper. We had a maid. Oh God, that sound even worse. Me don't know if you call her. Uh, we always had that. So I guess I, I probably did grow up a bit luxurious there because I can't afford no helper now. Wouldn't want none in there anyway. Then probably dishonest. But anyhow, whole other story. Nyam where you get. And got your bed. Yes. And then granny used to make we have Cersei, Cersei tea every night before we go to bed. Every night, Cersei tea and water crackers. <laughs> every night, Cersei tea and bitter Cersei tea and water crackers. You know they knew what they were doing? 
you know they are drink some bitter sarsine at the night, right? You know, when you wake up in the morning, you notice bowel movement, fluid bowel movement, clean out your system, body good and healthy and strong, good to go. Cod liver oil and them thing that before you go to school. Uh, but them people really, really cared about us. Like it was their job. Let me see how them can. Who who care about you like that today? Let me see how we can. Let me see how we can strengthen them immune system. Let me let me see how we can boil this and make sure them get them cod liver oil and make sure them get them. Yeah, nobody to check it for you like that no more. You <laughs> flow from the dog at eat cornmeal, much less you did rich. Yeah, them used to when we done eat. So everybody would have scraped the bone them together. And then the helper would have downstairs uh, turn the pot with the cornmeal for the dog them. And everything that was left over would go in at the ton cornmeal for the dog them. And then that's what the dog them would eat, would get fed. So you hear the dog crunch up the bone them <laughs> while eating the ton cornmeal and something. I don't know. I don't call it rich. I just said we had things in abundance. But now that I'm looking back, I'm like, yeah, we had a living helper. She was there. Um... Sometimes she never went home. Most times she didn't go home. So she would be there for weeks before she even went home to her own house. Yeah. And she'd have her own quarters in her house. One room and everything. Darling Walter Riley says, My mom brought me from Arkansas as six months old. Settled in Chicago, but for a better life. Not all America was good. Conditions were the same as Jamaica. Didn't even have a tub or toilet in Arkansas. Oh, I know about Arkansas. I know about the back the back parts of Texas today. If I tell some if I tell some Jamaican people that, they would think I'm lying. Back part of Texas today, you find board house and outhouse toilet, and I ain't talking about no nice board house neither. Some board house that look like nobody should be living in that. Like people probably stopped living in that like two decades, three decades ago, and it leans so up. The whole family still live there. We saw a lot of that. Because remember, I take these OT contracts, right? Way out in the back part of Texas. This is where the money is good because nobody don't really want to go out there. I'll go out there and rough it out. Last time I went out there, me and wife, get a wife, um, get a motel. And then you break, you, you got to go and broker a deal with the motel owner and tell them, say, yo, I'm out here on a contract. I'm going to be here for like 13 weeks. The owner goes, okay. Um, so you're trying to stay long term. So they don't charge you a nightly fee or a weekly fee because you're going to if you have an extended period of time. And then make you a little deal, you know, and you pay them. Why? Let me tell you something. Some people don't know them thing far and sweet. One of them hotel there. I was, I mean, I tell her about the one with the roach. I told you about the one with the big roach. Them. I'm laying down. As soon as I lay down in the room, one of the roach, them run up my neck, up my chest, up my neck. And I was like, yo, like, you know, when you lay down and you feel something like, but by the time we flick that roach there, the, like the roach fly and pitch right on the, the curtains for the blinds. And I'm staring at it. Come, we can't believe say it did it. And then here comes another roach. Run cross me upon the bed again. This time I jump up. I was like, ah, I get up. I look, turn on the light. The roach is everywhere. But me and wife took some dirty place, man, and make it. That was her job. She would make the place clean, you know, sanitize the place, fix up the place and all that while I go to the uh, clinic and do what I had to do. And then, boom, come home and she tried to make it as homely as possible. People used to laugh after we, when we had the video from there. Some people are hurtful um, or try to be hurtful. They never hurt me, but they try to be hurtful. Lord God, when a broke man, look on the dirty, nasty place on our stay, you know, some, some people used to be like, so Flo, send the girl go back to our mother or send her go back to her family because if a daughter the best you can't afford, we wouldn't want you to have my daughter stay in a place like that and all these things. And it all worked out. And it was all fun too. We made it work. We made it work. But why? Shout out to the people who travel for work, especially those in the health field, the travel nurses and therapists and them. I know firsthand what you go through because you yeah, try work and carry back home your money. You're not trying to work and use all your money to pay for somewhere to stay. And then when it's time to go on your contract, you see the max? 
that's the mathematics. So when the time is done with the contract, you leave with a pocket full of money. That's the goal. So more and and most of these places that we stayed, there was no choice. I that them have. That's their motels. There's no hotel around here. There's for miles. So you have to stay in at a dirty, dingy place, them clean it up, make it work, and these kind of things. And we do that. Yeah, man, but you have to, what, 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 what our elders say, if you want good, your nose have to run. Yeah, it means that sometimes you have to get uncomfortable. If you want progress, you have to get uncomfortable. Thank you, babe. Oh, babe, come here. I just want to see her. I want to see what she look like. Where are you? Oh. And turn off the, the same thing. I thought it was your phone and you just never did it turn it off. But I, tried I like that dress. Thank you. I'll try it on this. All right. Splat. Put on one dress. Uh, she had walk around in a panty earlier. I thought she still had the panties on, but she put on one dress. But the dress looked good still. I want the dress to shape her up good, you know? She she shape up the dress good. Put it that way. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> hey, yo. Some sadness again. Why well, I mean, I want to go into the sad story then, but why? Uh, maybe we can use this as a lesson here, man. As grown people, we need to keep beating the people and the, the younger people in their heads with these messages. Can't hide it. Right, focus, no distraction, <laughs> no distraction with <laughs> core. Yeah, I'll be easily distracted too. <laughs> I saw Raj Jada says, Maximum re re respect to Shakira for stand up with you. Facts, facts. Hey, while we on that topic, right? Check it. Um, you know, there's a trend going on right now. Where they're passing the microphone around them out of road to ask females or women like, how much does a guy have to make per year for you to want to date him or whatever? Everybody have come up with these ridiculous numbers. Oh, he, he if he a hundred thousand and that's a minimum, and and that's scraping the bottom of the barrel and this, that, and the other, right? You know, I watch, I watch her. And I'm like, me, I, I listened to her talk too. And I'm like, yo, come here. I said something one time and she was like, I realize, say, no woman use up themselves from when them young. I use them younger years the wrong way and stuff. I'm like, she on the right track, right? She on the right track because they actually really do. And the situations that I've been in, now don't get it twisted. We had a lot of fun. Like, so... How these contracts were scheduled, I would do Monday to Friday, right? You see, every Friday evening, we're we gone. And it'll be a couple of hours drive. We just turn it in our road trip. I said, well, we're going out to tech to Houston. So we'll go out to big city, Houston, Texas. We, we bring nice clothes. I'll go shopping and do all these things, you know, and try and enjoy life. But back to the grind comes Friday night. I'm calling from work Friday. I'm like, babe, just pack a bag. Yeah, let's go. I mean, not even want to wait at the house. Just pick her up, gone. And then we got to be back by Sunday night because work is Monday morning and thing. So we tried to fit some enjoyment in there. So big up to our for real, Rasa Jada, for, for being there for all that. Some place where she have to clean up and make it home and all these things. You know, she in there cook on a hot plate. Because when I travel by myself, I, mean, I don't use a microwave. I don't have a microwave in my house. I have a phobia about microwaves and microwave in my food. So when I when me travel promise, let me show you about survival. When I travel alone, right, I get one lettuce, a bag of tomatoes, and one or two cucumber or cucumbers, because they are foreign. So we can't say cucumber, cucumbers, right? And that's what I have. And usually I have a fridge in my room. And I buy one whole rotisserie chicken that's cooked already. You see, every evening I come home from work, chop off a piece of the chicken, cut up a salad, mix it up, put a little dressing on it, and me eat that Monday to Monday. 
You understand? So when she is with me, she break out. No, we got to get a hot plate. I mean, I not even didn't know something like that exists. You know, she break out a little hot plate, plug it in. It have two burners, a whole stove. Because there's no stove in these places. And she cooked meals. I used to come home to meals, which was very different from me traveling alone. So, yeah, man, she really did more than stand up and stick by. In the last part, though, is where the baby came into the picture. And then I think we were, yeah, we went out on the road with Kai, too. When Kai was very small and she just had baby. I think wife you get pregnant out there on the road. Come back home. You did, right, babe? Yeah. See? Get pregnant out there on the road. Came back home. Belly a grow. Came back home. Have baby. Back on the road with the baby. Kai was six months. See it there? So a six month old baby and all this. Yeah. Have a, can't ask too many women to do this. Six month old baby. And you talking about this is where we're going to stay for the next 13 weeks. And she's like, where? Here? Did you see the size of the roach was just passed? Did you see how dirty the place look? It smell bad in there. All these other things. Nope. She the type like, just get me all the cleaning stuff. Come back. We go to the store. Find the local grocery store. Go find the cleaning stuff. And she get to work. So yeah, man. Good woman in your life. You know, things work out. Good. Blessings come. Even more. Lulu Ridges says, I love road trips like that. We we did too. We still do. Sarah Kayanti said, we really want to see you and brother Riza Islam sit down and talk. Riza Islam? Mm. Boy, Sarah, um, certain things that people talk about still, I don't touch on certain things. And I don't because we live in a funny time. And you got to be careful what you're out here doing and saying, you know what I'm saying? Because you will end up disappearing. And people be like, Remember SoFlo where he used to come on and we used to talk and laugh and stuff. Where did he go? Right. So different agendas. You have to, you have to skillfully move your way through this. See? Roxanne McIntosh says, I feel it's best to find a good-hearted person and you work together and build together and work out better. When we meet Shakira, right? Let me go off on something. When I meet Shakira, you know what? A couple of things I noticed. I used to pass, like we in Miami, we we in the most exciting time of the year in Miami. So all kind of luxury cars out and people with them fanciness. And I'm like, yo, that's a nice Bugatti. Only see like one of those around here. Oh, that's a nice Ferrari. Oh, I like that AMG something, something. I like this, this. Every last one of them that I call, she's like, what? A what? She's not even looking in the direction of them things. She was never impressed by anything like none of that. You know what I mean? And for the people that want talk about, here's a list of places you can't take me and don't take me to no cheesecake factory and all that. She's a walk in the park girl. Yeah. So boy, I don't know. I could I could like tell my brothers like you just got to be careful who you choosing kind of thing. We ain't going to touch the Will Smith topic. Oh, I did that already, Crystal G. If you're talking about Will Smith with the with um the assistant and the Tasha K interview, we did that days ago. Did that. But there are signs that you look for when you when when you are look for a woman, but especially a young woman, you looking for That's hard to find today. She's not materialistic at all. She's more like a homemaker. Y'all see her? For those of you who follow her videos, y'all see her. She always changing up the house. She like, if me know what season it is when me walk, when me come in on my yard. I know what season it is from I pull in the driveway. Because the front door to the house changed. I'm like, okay, is it Thanksgiving? Can this look like Thanksgiving colors and stuff? Yeah, babe, it's Thanksgiving. We're at this time of the year. Oh, because I don't pay attention to the days. I just grind, right? She grind too, but. These are things that she loves to do, like genuinely love to do. Like if you're going to the bedroom right now, I walked in my bedroom one day. I was like, damn, this look like one of them fancy places that when PF is still at before our 300 or something dollar a night. And it's my bedroom. You know, I look at my closet now. I'm like, she just be doing stuff. It has to be in the woman. 
A woman has to be raised. I think a woman has to either be raised that way or taught herself how to be that way, kind of thing. Remember, I know me don't want no slave, you know. I don't want I don't want to conquer anybody as in you do as I say. And uh, so to have somebody who is all those qualities, can't argue with that. I didn't have to ask for it. It came with her naturally, you know. Dar Darling Walter Riley says, I do the same things. I love doing those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, you never have to wrestle our feet, you know. Make sure you cook this and can you cook or try clean up this and fix this and do don't have to say a word. Don't say a word. Right. Young woman that flex like a big, big woman. One more can you ask for? And down to ride for anything. You know? So I go. Blessed. Just count my blessings out loud and, and showing appreciation too at the same time. You know? It's good to be quiet and say uh, thank you and I appreciate you and all that. But sometimes you have to say it out loud in front of everybody so the world know kind of thing. That's all? I would say more, but I won't. Because then she go, round there, feel full of herself. And then she go, no, say she will break my heart. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to say I love you too much. And you tell people you love them too much, them hurt you. As long as it's appreciated. Oh yeah, man, big time. Big time. I don't know if she'll get the kind of appreciation what she want, but I give appreciation as much as I can. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As much as I can. Yeah. With that said, as long as it's appreciated. Real talk. I do the same. All right. Big up, brother. Consider yourself lucky. Yes, Darty T. Very, very, very. Very. Right now, I don't even want to go nowhere. That, I wish this for everybody. Because we are big people, right? I wish this for everybody. Right now, if people invite me out, I'm the, kind, I'm the type of person that... Oh, okay. For instance, right now, if we take a trip... And I say just book, because I do this, I book random trips. So we'll book a trip, the whole family though. And I'll find somewhere like probably out of town, down in Miami, something, a house with a nice pool and all these other things. Just a different scenery for the whole family to get away out of their routine and just be with, with each other kind of thing, right? Everywhere we go now, I can't wait to get home. I'm like, yeah, everything nice and everything here, you know, after the first day, that it all goes away. It's like, yeah, I'm ready for go home now. Because, <laughs> oh, I damn me yard. And it's hard to find somewhere nice now, because when you go somewhere nice now, I'm like, man, it's nice and everything, but my couch calling me. I want to be home. Just because I'm home, just comfortable. Yeah. Just comfortable like that. But anyhow. This is why I say we have to give thanks because there are people who can't say the same. And today is Thanksgiving Day. Seeing? Dorothy T says it's getting older too. No, it's not the getting older. It's, you know what? Yeah, you're right, Dorothy T. It's that too. It's that too. I think the older you get is the more you don't want to, you're more, you become more selective as in who you want to be around. Um, how you want to preserve your energy, how you want to use your energy, who you want to give your energy to, and these kind of things. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Because sometimes, you don't know, something wild take me and I'm like, yo, me I go tonight, I feel like hookah and alcohol and loud music and everything. And we go and we have some fun, but it be short, real short. I'm heading right back to the house. And after a while, it's like, you don't really want their own them people. I don't know nobody in here. Anything can happen in here. You know, me see if I'm a yard. So you start thinking along those lines. What are the kids doing right now? <laughs> That's the worst part. What are the kids doing right now? Me have call and check. Or I'm calling and I'm checking. The baby's all right? Yeah? Okay. Call again. The baby's all right? Yeah? Call again. I would agree as I have to travel for work, but I hate leaving my house. Yes, Kaz. Hate leaving the house, but you got to go get it. I wish I had listened more to my dad, Wayne Corr said. And do I, Wayne? What daddy did tell you for do? 
Happy Thanksgiving, Senior Sexy. Happy Thanksgiving to all the people who are saying Happy Thanksgiving. May I run off my mouth and I'm probably not paying attention to the comment section so often. Veronica Gale said four hours max. Yep, that's it. Four hours max. Time to go. I was always an old soul marching to my own drum. Never a follower. I want to tell you something. Um, That's exactly how wifey is. Yeah. Remember, I know she young got me, you know. Um, it ain't no secret. But she she was a homebody from day one. And even me, I used to be like, no, man, you're too young for this, man. You're too pretty for in a house and too young for in a house. Come, get up, put on something. Come on, let's go. This, that, and the other. She down to go if you down to go. But if you down to stay home or she would rather stay home. She just stay home. She always been a homebody from day one. And I was like, yeah, I'm like a quality here. But I'm ready to go out. I'm always ready to go out, though. But then I end up not going because I love me yard. <laughs> but I'm always down to go out and have a good time still, you know? Hype life make you a poor person. Mm -hmm. Your father was right, my friend. Your father was right. And chasing many women just use you up. Use you up. <laughs> you use up. As a man, chasing many women in our culture, you are gallus, right? So we have gallus culture. I forget a whole heap of gala. You have this and that. Okay. When you start to realize, you're like, that's a waste in every friggin' way possible. You waste out yourself physically. You ever try balance and juggle multiple women? You waste out yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, every alley, in the book, the financially part there. You might not be spending on them, but you're spending running in between all of them. So that too. And it's taking away time from you being able to sit with yourself and figure out something constructive that's going to benefit you for the long run. I don't have time for that. You could have a plan a business plan now. How you set up this, earn some extra income, create multiple streams of income. How you do all that? Boy, Stacey, I call. And Kemisha says she want to give me the pum pum tonight. So over there, somebody there. Ne next two days, Simone say, and Janet say, and Jani say. All that gallus stuff is cool for a minute. Until you really realize... The same thing where we tell woman, or you who are out yourself, is the same thing you're doing. And but you are doing it now, worse away. Remember, I know it's always the man. Well, I'm old school, so it's always the man that's gonna be looked at as how you holding your family down. You see, when people see your family out in the streets, right? If they see my kids and my wife and she look terrible, what, what do you think people go away saying? If them see a woman with our picnic them and them look terrible. People go away saying, damn, she a single mom. She hurting. She look like she needs some help. If they know that I'm my family that, what you think they go away saying? Damn, yo, look for the man. Pick me them. No, man, if you do better than that, man. Brother, look why you youth them. Look how them look terrible. Look for them, oh, man. She look tore up and busted like when you can't take care. You can't take care of your family better than that. So, end of the day. It falls back on you as a man. Unless you just plan to live your life single, your whole life. Me, I know one of them, man. Then. I don't know. Um, what them call it again? White liver and white kidney. Yeah, so me, me, me build different. So me have to have my woman there. And because, you know, a white liver, white kidney, that means so you better keep a woman close by. I would rather do that than run around and risk diseases. Get up with something on your teeth where you can't cure and can't come off. Now you have something where look like <laughs> we look like a hockey puck instead of a tealy. <laughs> oh God. You are not a coolie. I'm mixed with coolie. My my grandfather, my Cleavy, is coolie. Yeah. And my mom and dad, my my grandmother and grandfather had Six children. They had seven, one pass away. They had six. I don't know if I want to show your mommy, but. And they came out. Three of them really, really light. And three of them chocolate. 
which is <laughs> which is funny, which is funny. But yeah, you never know, Samia. Schooling me up. White liver and white kidney. Big up being the man. Black like a tar and me strong like a lion. Eee. That's what them said though. If you feel like say you're wild as a man, you know, and you love the presence of a woman, get you a wife. Otherwise, you're going to get out of the road and run up and down and wasting out yourself. See? Touch a white liver. <laughs> Lulu Ridges sent me to so flow, a melting pot of cultures in the family. Yeah, man, we're family well, well mix up. We're family well mix up. Um, matter of fact, it's hard for some Jamaicans to accept this, but I say it too. I said to myself, because somebody did, I said the other day, most Jamaica, majority of Jamaicans are mixed and to a great degree mixed too. Um, hear me now. Because them make a list, right? Or oh, them mix with Asian and them mix with this and them mix with that. I say, yeah, the Jamaicans, them who don't want to be considered as black, them are going to say, see it there? Me are this and me are that. I'm Scottish mixed with Irish mixed with this. I mean, I said to myself, say, Scotland, Ireland, Scottish and Irish. Them people, they don't give a damn about we, you know. But we are mixed with them. But them don't give a damn about us. So... As indentured servants, they came through, they laid seeds, and when times changed, they left. So we are like bastard children of, <laughs> of... So I don't glorify none of that. But I know my culture, and my history should say, rather, as far as the genetic breakdown of... But me not really go around saying all that. We don't go around claiming... Me not claim nobody when I claim me. I'm half Jamaican, half Bahamian. Andrew Skinner. Half Jamaican, half Bahamian. Oh, you just Caribbean. <laughs> you just you just like you're just a next Caribbean person. Half anything out of the Caribbean, you just a Caribbean. I don't even bother calling your country. I'm half Trinidadian, half Jamaican. Yeah, you just a Caribbean person. Half Haitian, half Jamaican. Yeah, you just a Caribbean person. Half Grenada and half you is a Caribbean person. Angel D says, I believe I'm full Jamaican. I believe you're not. Well, yeah, that way. We can be full Jamaican. I'm full Jamaican. I was born and raised. I mean, partially raised there, but yes, we are. I did the ancestry thing. African, Irish, Scottish, Norwegian. See that? You are. And I don't know why a lot of people don't know this and still thinking about you are some 100% undiluted mandinka. Um, you don't even speak no mother tongue. And it ain't because of slavery. You're like way not separating us from Africa and African culture because that's definitely the more dominant one among us, right? However, it's like you have to ignore all the other one them. But them not claim we, like me said before. So where we are claiming them for? They ain't doing nothing for us and they not claiming us. Ain't a bunch of them walking around saying, you know, I have some relatives over in Jamaica that carries the Mac Pearson name or the whatever the name them is, these, these English, British, Irish, Scottish names that so many Jamaicans carry. Now this other six half dozen of the other old Calypso song. We are mixed up out of many one people. We are very mixed up. Very. That's why we have all them beautiful faces, different features from different, you know. We, we, are, we are the real exotic, you know. Don't make nobody fool you. And we are the real exotic. <laughs> the whole how we mix up like Don Khan Meal or Jada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like Todd Card Meal. Hey. Here one of man. What we on some good vibes and I don't want to break the vibes, but these are the best times when I do this. Cause in the middle of niceness and fun, you can just punch in a reality. It's like when Granny used to give with medicine. Granny used to give with medicine with honey. Me never know that. Told y'all the story before. I'm trying to do what my grandmother would do. And Mr. Me, I give my children them a washout, right? 
We're going to start off with Cersei first and then work into actual. And I remember my son projectile vomiting across the table while they were having breakfast. Vomit all in and bread of them breakfast and everything. I didn't get mad. I laughed. But when I went to Jamaica, I asked my grandmother because none of my kids could drink it. And I said, Grandma, how did you used to get us to drink the Cersei? And how you get us to take cod liver oil on them something that called me? I tried to take cod liver oil. I'm like, mm. and Cersei bitter, but me work with it. She said, I never give you, I never give you cod liver oil by itself, baby. And I, I never give you Cersei by itself either. I used to put honey in there and sugar and so. I'm here, serrated. Watch me, I force my kids them to drink it. And that's why they throw in it. And like, my son threw up all his food he just ate, plus the thirsty web that I try to swallow. And I learned from that. So, with that, while we're having fun here, we're going to go right into a sobering story. Teen cousins die in a, few, in a fiery bike crash because warnings were ignored. Two young men lost their lives, again, Westmoreland, but two young men lost their lives recently on the roads in Jamaica. Remember, this is one of the things I talk about all the time, like the roads and us not having discipline on the roads. Right. Put a face to the names, I will in a minute, and put a face to the story, I will in a minute. But look at this car. You can see that card or what's left of it. You see that? We're not learning, man. But this is for the young people them that's out there doing too much. We're not learning. We're not learning. Sometimes I think the cars that are going to Jamaica are built differently than the car. Come see cars colliding at the US all the time. Me see bumper tear off, you know, maybe a dent up on the side. But the kind of mashup of the cars I see in Jamaica, I'm like, did they put that in a something and compress the car? Because how the car fall up so and just crush in so. Or hit and burst into flames and burn out in no time. I don't know if they're sending different cars to Jamaica than like these cars that are getting into these accidents. Them not really, it's not the same car that we see over here. Anyhow, Petersfield, Westmoreland. Parents and teachers of two teenagers, they are both cousins. They died in a fiery crash on their way to Petersfield High School on Tuesday. And the people are baffled that they were traveling on a motorcycle. Let me show you the burnout car. It's against school rules, the principal said. One boy's mother had warned him not to ride a bike to school. He promised her he would not ride the bike to school. These deaths are particularly difficult as the Westmoreland school is still mourning the loss of a 15-year-old girl who died in a five-fatality crash on November 13th, which I told you all about. All three were in uniform. All three were in the fourth form. The two boys who died yesterday, or day before yesterday, and the girl from the five-person incident. For this one, we are coming out of a week of prayer. We are praying school. We are a praying school. We had a brief devotion, and we prayed with the generals. Them still do that. Them still have devotion at school? Wow. I know that's removed from the schools over here. And um, I'm not arguing with it. It's I, I, I know why they do it here. Because, check it. When I first came to the U.S. and I'm going to school, they used to have devotion in school here too. Being that earlier days I was raised in Jamaica, I'm used to having devotion at school. So, uh, Fell into the same routine. 
as I got older, I realized that there was no more devotion. I didn't know it was something that it was a fundamental change that took place, right? Until one day I paid attention and there was no more devotion in school. Matter of fact, if a teacher called prior in the school, that teacher would lose him or her job. What was it about? It was about you being in the classroom, you calling priors. And you having a devotion, and you're singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. And you're going to pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes, and you're praying. And you're saying, in the name of Jesus, so and so, that little Muslim kid, that little Hindu kid, that little Jewish kid, that little whatever all the other religions are, they're out of place. And you are actually imposing on them your religious beliefs. So when it was understood like that, I, 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 I was for it. I was like, yeah, if that's the case. They could have been like, let's have a moment of prayer and everybody go silent and you pray in your own way. But once they start to instruct you to close eyes and not everybody prays like that, right? That's a Christian thing that you were forcing onto somebody's child who left their child in your company to teach them not to indoctrinate them into your religion kind of thing. So with that said, I was like, okay. Anyhow, back to this. They said that we're coming from a week of prior. We are a praying school because the little girl that died last week in the five-person death incident, she was from the same school. We had a brief devotion. We prayed with the general student body, said acting principal, Vinton Vaz. He described the students and the teachers as traumatized, but he said that they had been receiving support provided by the education ministry. According to Vaz, the school was zero tolerance for students driving bikes to school. If you ride a bike, you can't ride no bike come at school. It is banned from the school, period. We do not condone it, and they cannot park the bike anywhere on school compound or anywhere that we are aware of, he said. He said that one of the boy's parents had already been called in prior to the incident when they learned that the student was indeed driving a bike to school. Vaz also noted that just two weeks ago, the Transport Authority and the Island Traffic Authority had engaged with students and hosted a sensitization workshop. 16-year-old Ajani Roberts, uh, Robinson and 14-year-old Zakael McIntyre are just the latest in a long list of Westmoreland Road fatalities that involves bikes. Again, one of my favorite places to be in Jamaica, Westmoreland. But when me see the youth them ride, some of them is scary. Like summertime, man have on no shirt. Man have on slippers. And a yang yang fly past you so fast, your hair in your nose go with the motion. Should be zoom. And them ride hard. And they be le like lean upon the bike some kind of way. And as I go down the road, like them not care. No helmet, no protective gear, no nothing. They just flying. And the drivers who drive their cars on those roads, them I fly past to in the opposite direction. I'm like, yo, I like seeing it. But I look, I look at it like it's death calling. I would never. But yeah, West Milan have whole heap of bike riders, whole heap of yang yang out on these things. And a lot of them are really, really young and are big people. The parish has a bike taxi culture and for four years has led the rest of the country in road fatalities. Hmm. The parish has a bike taxi culture, but all that's the good side. You can use your bike. You can make money. Maybe you can actually earn a living. On the flip side, they lead Jamaica in road fatalities. Yes, Wayne Corps, West Milan did create that, and that's their thing. And that's why when I go there, it feels so different from any other parish. Because you, you will know. As soon as you hit, you're going to know. Kayago see them come out of nowhere. And suddenly you're just surrounded by them and they're just flying past you. 
Girl, I, it, that always gives me this nostalgic, yes, I'm back in West Milan kind of feeling, right? But it's dangerous too. It's dangerous too. So they have a bike culture there, uh, um, bike taxi culture there, and they also lead Jamaica in road fatalities. Now, the parish has a, yeah, 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 despite frequent training sessions and free safety equipment. We never know about that. I don't think a lot of the youth them know that they have free training sessions and free safety equipment. It would be good in these articles to tell them where they could get those so I can tell them. So Angela Hewitt was understandably reluctant for her son to use that method of transportation because they do lead. She's probably seen a lot of these deaths. Young youth dead off of the bike. Now, after a friend told her, Robinson, who is affectionately called JJ, is her son, somebody told her, say, you know, say, JJ, I ride bike. I ride the bike, go school. She said on Tuesday, she confronted her son about it, and he denied it. I said to him, I said, JJ, don't ride no bike, go to school, you know. And at this morning, me here, say, him dead off of the bike. The distressed mother added, saying, that she was totally unaware how her son even came to own a bike. Now, again, I'm not faulting nobody. This is where I know I was sheltered. You, you remember that you can't own nothing that your parents don't know about, don't know where you get it from. No bicycle, no, not even a dolly. Not even uh, if you're a little girl and you bring home a dolly, your parents want to know uh, who gave that dolly there. Carry the people them dolly go back and give them and don't take anything from anybody, right? That kind of stuff. So you yeah, park bike and your mom don't know where you get the bike from. His father had something to say about this too. Now, in reaching to the boy's death, president of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Leighton Johnson, said that it underscores the urgent need for us to implement a rural school bus system that will assist in ensuring that our students will commute to school on a daily basis in a manner that is safe. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. Everybody who live anywhere that we call country in Jamaica knows. It ain't like there's a school bus system in place. You know, the picnic them off, got take public transportation. Most places in Jamaica don't even have sidewalk. And that's for people who would have to walk to go stand up out a bus stop. Like, especially, again, West Milan. I'm looking at how the car and the bike, them fly past and them don't have no sidewalk. So all you who is a pedestrian, that's just walking. You could easily get hit down. And people do get hit down there all the damn time. My son is 20, and when he asked for an electric scooter, I said no. That's what I'm used to say, Karen Notice. Take care of the people, them something go back. Me not pay feet when you broke it. And don't take nothing from nobody either. But Robinson's mother said that she had told him to take the school bus. He just didn't listen to her. So you see, when you don't listen, problem. Your parents now tell you something for your own good. And as we get older, we know this now. So hear what? If you're younger and you know it earlier, the better your life will be. Some of us wish we knew things when we were younger. If me didn't know. Everybody who's older says that today. Boy, if me didn't know certain things when me had it all 15, 14, you know. Right now, we're sitting in a different position in our life still, you know. Thankful to the most I for making it this far still, but certain things we never know, right? Remember when you started bucking authority? Remember when you started, like, they've been telling us what to do. But when you actually started really going around the authority to go do what you did, Wando, whether it was 16, 17, 18, 19, them age there. And now you look back, because you're twice that age now, and you're like, damn, it was for, it was all for my own good. And for those of you who have children, you end up telling your kids them the same things that those adults around you who cared about you were telling you back then. You see that? Right. So that tells me 
that the, the sooner you submit to that authority, the better life will be for you. His mom saw him with the bike. Where you get bike from? She didn't even know he had a bike. People are tell her, say he's riding a bike. School I call. Your Sunday year with bike. His cousin, who also died. So this is one family lose two teenagers, one go. His cousin, Francis Reed, who confirmed that there is a school bus that transports Petersfield High School students to and from school. Well, the bus transfers them, transports them from Darleston, was also left reeling from the news of the fatal crash. And he struggled to accept that the teenager lied to him when they spoke on Sunday. They were actually at a funeral, he said. And he told JJ, brother, reduce your speed when you are travel upon the motorcycle and don't ride it, go to school. Him saying park the bike at Darleston so, and then catch the school bus, but he was lying. So when me here this morning, me frightened, me frightened, same lie to me. That's teenagers. That's what they do. They buck authority. They're trying to exercise independence. You pick them no domino. Them bond with intelligence. Soon as they reach a certain age, they're trying to figure out more, pushing boundaries, trying to see how much you can get away with, trying to establish a person, not a personality, but trying to establish their some control. Remember when you're a kid, you don't have no control, you know. Somebody tell you when to eat. Come on, let's go. Bedtime. Come on, get in the bathroom. Let's bathe. It's like being in prison. Them feed you. When them want to feed you. All kind of something. So as you get older, you try to figure out, no, I'm not ready to eat yet. Right? It's not come eat now. It's, no, I'm not ready to eat yet. So you start to figure out how to be independent. Them I tell you, don't ride your bike. The whole I'm bridging them out of road ride bike, mummy. But you're not going to tell her that. Right? Where did you get the, money, the bike from? Money for buy a bike even. I could have one of your bridging them just give you a bike. You hide it round a so and so and walk, go home. Don't ride no bike, go school in a so floor. Okay, mommy, I'm not riding a bike no more. Come out and look. All right, go on, same way. Meet the bridging them down the street. Everybody I ride bike, I ride out on the road, you know, we are doing like a thing. If only you knew earlier, right? Is that that they were trying to control you? It was that they foresaw what could have happened. As an adult, you see further out than as a young person. Right? You see further out, you see the possibilities. Them not see the possibilities. Remember that the frontal lobe is not fully developed yet. Higher decision making, impulse control, higher thinking. They don't have that in the frontal lobe. So if you can't control impulse, what happens? In the frontal lobe of the brain. Let me see how fast a bike I can go. You see when the frontal lobe is fully developed, you're like, this bike goes really fast. But I know if I go fast on that road here, I'm probably crashing or something. I'll mash up myself. I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to go slow. Matter of fact, I'm not even riding a bike. Because I see people ride bike and every time them fall off, I... There's no protection. It's not like an airbag hits them. Them broke up. Frontal lobe development. So it's natural to rebel as a teen. You know, I don't want to add no insult to the injury. I just want to explain the rebelliousness, which is natural levels of rebellion still. So the Winthorne police reported that about 6.50 a.m., the Withhorn, let me say it right. Come in, I want to reach a Westmoreland and somebody said, My youth, I know Winthorn, you know. A wind... <laughs> All right, so the Withhorn police reported that about 6 50 a.m., Robinson and McIntyre, they were traveling on a motorcycle heading northly along the Petersfield Main Road when the driver lost control while negotiating a corner. Oh, God. The teens then collided with a motor car. And the motor car I showed you just now, that's how hard they hit that motor car. The motor car burst into flames. 
Police were summoned. The boys were transported to the hospital. They were pronounced dead. Damn. One of the boys' father, he said, amid the grief and anguish and pain of losing his only child, one of them, that's his daddy's only picnic. Isaac McIntyre is adamant that indiscipline is part of the cause why his son and his cousin died. Zachiel McIntyre, 14 years old, and his cousin. They were grade 10 students at Petersfield High School. Died yesterday after the motorbike they were driving on collided with a car heading in the opposite direction. Head-on collision. His father says, is unruliness do this, you know? Unruliness. Him now listen. It's because of unruliness. I give him $2,000 every morning to go to school, which include paying for his taxi fares and for his lunch money. So it's not like him didn't have money to navigate his way to school. I give him $2,000 every morning. When he come home, I see him ride the bike. I'm going to keep on reminding him to stop riding on the road because I know someday I was going to hear some bad news about him and that bike. Which part him live with his mom? His dad said, he rec his dad recently returned from somewhere and his dad said he told his son to come live with him. Come live with my man because I heard that he's not behaving himself living with his mother. Here we go again with children needing their fathers around and fathers needing to be there as often as possible. You know, after a teenage boy, that, that little boy that you growing without his dad, it's all cool and gravy until that little boy that reach a six-foot teenager where you have to look up to and know you wrestling with a man. And now he's developing some solidness to his personality is formed and him have a mind of him own. Yeah. And then you're like, damn. I've met women who are scared of their teenage sons. Mm -hmm. Because him get big now. Too big. And he don't even have to say nothing to her. Him just look upon her a certain way. I she afraid. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, oh, my son can't look for me in a certain way. I'm afraid or nothing like that. Yeah, okay. Um, fight the Mansi, no? Fight the Mansi. I remember the last beating me get from my mother. A summer came around where I shot up to like six feet tall. Me and my sister used to be the same size, same height. Matter of fact, at one point, my sister was a little taller than me. I mean, no, no, one year and one summer, that summer was my growing summer. At the end of that summer, I was six feet tall. Remember, my last beating, our last kind of man, bad up, bad up from my mother. And she tried, she tried slapping me, like hit me in my face. I'm going to grab her hand. She tried to use the other hand. I grabbed the other hand. She tried wiggling away. She couldn't move. <laughs> I could see the look in her face, right? Cause you, you know, say a problem this now, right? You know, say I fight your one blood clot, fight me, Alfina. Eh? I fight your one blood and try to find something now. You don't know if she going to stab you. I always used to think some of my grandparents and my parents them would chop me up or something like that. Me don't know. Like got to the extreme. That's how much fear I had in me for them. But me didn't just make up my mind as a teenage youth, and me done take lick. Yeah, so when we see the big hand come, I was like, grab it. Next hand, grab it. Come on. Yeah. And let me fling with our hand them like this. Never get a next lick. So yeah, boys especially need their dad. I don't have to say nothing to any of my boys. And they're all big. Every one of my youth, them, they're a teenager, is over six feet tall. Them can mouth off to their mom or give her attitude 
They, they, they don't even do it with me. When I speak, it is what it is. If you blink wrong, I say, what's up? What's up? Them disappear. You see them feet, them eye them start wander like this. All I say is, what's up? What's up? You heard me? Okay. That's it. Gone. Different level. Different type of authority. You know what I mean? With their mother, talk back, talk back, talk back, talk back. Should they ring out our truth? Talk, 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 talk. With me, I don't say much. I'll talk if I want to talk. Like, every damn time I keep on telling you the same thing. You guys are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, blah, blah, blah. But you see, when it comes to, hey, I need you to go do this. I bet you won't be no, oh, man, I don't want to. I don't want to. You're right. You're right. What? Oh, nothing, Dad. I'm on it. That's it. So Pickney need them daddy for facts. Right? Uh, <laughs> where you say me? I grab mommy. <laughs> Not me, I say I grab mommy. Where you think me for the take licking on my face? No, man. Me reach a point now where that, that, that point it was done. It, come on, I'm six feet tall. Where y'all beat my face for? I already took it when I couldn't take it. When I couldn't do anything about it. Me just establish my boundaries now. That's why I'm trying to tell you that when the teenagers, you get away, mommy, you can't get away until him reach bigger than you or even up with your size. See if you can not keep battering him up because you think that's what works, right? Lord, the little boy I get talking. I mean, still be talking sometimes, you know, enough, you know. Lord, the little boy I get talking, you know, I'm tired of talking. I start beating him up now. I come box up my face. You think I'm just going to stay there like, oh, you my mom. I'm not hitting her back, though. I would never hit my mom. But I'm definitely not going to stand there and let her beat my face in. So, yeah, I'm grab her hand, them. That's it. <laughs> it's like... You can see the look at our face, too, and it's like blood fire is a man strength. This, this, I know, my little boy, because parents look at you like you're their baby for the rest of your life. All when you're a big man with beard, pound face, and your own picnic, them, they especially Caribbean parents, they still look at you, and African parents do the same thing. They still look at you like you're the little youth, what them used to call that little nickname there, but you just grow a little taller. But the same principles still apply, kind of thing. Right? Yeah, I would never violate that, put hands on my mom. But I'm definitely not standing around for any beating in my face, especially. That's a no-go. But the day came, and I recognized it, and she recognized it. And it was a very profound moment in time. Because it was like, this is where the lines are drawn. Won't be any more of this anymore. You have to go find a different way to deal with him now. You see the same change. Right. Right. So this little young man here now, his dad said, man, he wanted him to come live with him because he realized or he was hearing that he wasn't listening to his mom. You know, his mother said, where you get? She didn't even know Sam have a bike. Your son have a bike, a ride road. Fast. You hear what the other person said? He said, me see him out there on the bike, you know, in my ride fast. Me tell him, say, you have to slow down when you ride the bike and don't ride it, go to school. And his mom there didn't even know he had a bike. And everybody else knows Sam have a bike and ride fast. Seeing. Boy. Sad situation still, you know. Can look at you them. Can kill off themselves just like this. Um, We'll put a face to the name though. Always hard when young people pass. Especially so young. These are what I call mistakes that you never get to learn off of. Can everybody make mistakes? No, but you learn and you don't do it again. That's one. Kind of like a moment of silence for the youth. Them. If you are listening to your parents, at this point it's too late to say if anything, it is what it is. You know? And this one, this is um, Zachael McIntyre. 
This is the one whose father was saying, I feel mad I say, she didn't know, say my bike. This is the one whose father said he gives him $2,000 a day to cover his transport and back and forth to school. Yeah. And his lunch money. Young. Baby. A baby. I got kids his age. So yeah, for me, he's a baby. He's actually the age of uh, my son. That's the car they hit. Don't ask about their bike. If you look down here, you can see like that the bike tire wedged into the car. And boom, burst into flames. That's what's left of the car they hit. That's to show you how fast they were traveling. And I'm telling you, you got to be like in West Milan for seat when time them fly past you. Come and see them and I'm... Me, Anytime I see them, like, my heart is like, Jano. And then here is a Johnny, which is his cousin. Babies. Yeah, man. So we hold their faces up here. We know sir, we have people that tune in that see this. You know, I want I want this to be a moment for those out there on the bike them, especially the young youth them who really don't have control of these bikes and don't have no impulse control yet. So them just fling a bike and dash it and see how fast it can go and all these things that end up losing their life. If your parents say leave the bike alone, leave the bike alone, youth. Them know them are top out. Early funeral. Or worse, you get injured, paralyzed from the neck down. Something like that. It's one of them if me didn't know, kind of something. Unfortunately, they made mistakes that they'll never be able to correct. Because they're gone forever. The update. My condolences goes out to that family because it's one family that lost two youths, you know. They're cousins, they're blood cousins. My, my condolences goes out to them. An update on the Salt Spring double murder. Remember the double murder that we covered recently where the taxi cab got shot up with the two schoolboys, seven and nine years old in it? There was another school child in there who actually lived he he survived he escaped he didn't get injured and he was telling what happened okay so i gave you one update that said they did some operations and a person military upper not military but law law enforcement operations and a person of interest was brought into custody and the person of interest was working with law enforcement to find the person who actually did it well the next headline that follows is the update that says the police gunned down the person of interest in Salt Spring double murder. I don't like these headlines. A man who was listed as a person of interest in connection with a recent double murder in Salt Spring, St. James, was shot and killed during a joint police operation at his alleged hideout in St. Mary. So he was running and hiding. He heard that he was wanted for questioning for it. Didn't go into the police or nothing. They hunted him down. They found him. The deceased man has been identified as Odane Barrett, also known as Jungle of Bird Hill, Megatop, in Salt Spring, St. James. The intelligence-led operation consisted of lawmen from St. James and the Area 2 Operation Support Team, who reportedly found Barrett in Mason Hall, St. Mary, during the early hours of Wednesday. Reports are that during the operation, Barrett engaged the police officers with gun gunfire, which was returned. He sustained injuries, and despite their prompt medical attention and transportation to the Port Moriah Hospital, he was pronounced dead. Here's my thing. Anytime I see person of interest gunned down, 
I look at it as a murder not solved. Person of interest gone down. Person of interest means you know something about or could possibly know something about. Person of interest doesn't mean you are the culprit. Person of interest doesn't mean that's the trigger man. Now, I have a huge problem with this right here. The people them don't understand words. Like when I take time again, Cardonsness is fashionable to realize that when we, yes, yes, kill them off, police, all of them, personal interest, all wicked boy. Person of interest is not, it didn't say the person responsible for. It's a person of interest. This is dangerous. This is dangerous because it didn't even say a suspect. It said a person of interest. This is dangerous because if you look at that, if you, that was a triple murder, you know, done by one man, you know. This one man that did that triple murder, that I would describe that person as a total psycho that should not be among people. Because that person is definitely going to do that again. You don't just wake up on a regular day and you are trail a man because you want to kill this man. So you trail him and then you shoot up a car with kids in it indiscriminately. Just spray the car with a rifle. I don't know if it was an AK or it was an AR-15 or what, but it was a rifle. It wouldn't make a big difference because if it was an AK, you're talking 762 shells, which is way more powerful. If you're talking 556, you're talking AR-15s. Either way, the bullet them look bigger, longer, different, but at the same time, both cause damage. Anyways, you spray a vehicle with an assault rifle knowing kids are in there means you never care who you are going to kill means you don't care about even children that are innocent. It's not even like, say, it's your enemy's children and you're going by the old can't catch quack or catch him shot kind of something. These are kids that have nothing to do with your thing but the man who you want sitting in a car with him. So you're going to just kill everybody in the car. That's not the kind of person we want to go Oh, person of interest dead. Good. Murder solved. That person could be walking around out there free. Because everybody feel like it was solved already. And we're just waiting for him to do it again. Right. So we never like the outcome there, right? Uh, regardless, the reports are that during the operation, Barrett engaged the police officers with gunfire which was returned and he sustained these injuries that he died from. The Jamaica Constabulary Force said in a statement that the operation is significant in the face of the state of public emergency, which was implemented earlier this month. This operation is a significant marker in our ongoing efforts under the recently implemented state of public emergency in the parish of St. James. The initiative has already yielded positive results underscoring our commitment to combating crime and enhancing safety for all our citizens. Since the start of the state of emergency, there has been no major crimes reported in the St. James Division. Does it work, SOE? Yes, it does. But does it work long term? It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable because they don't have enough personnel to sustain it if that's the case they could just put the whole jamaica under state of emergency and have enough boots on the ground to sustain it but they don't so of course what's happening they come into st james the gunman them run into clarendon they go into clarendon the gunman them run go spanish town or run go somewhere else sent sent um St. Catherine. Them go St. Catherine, the gunman, them run go back to St. James, or run go back up Clarendon, or run go St. Anne, or run go somewhere else. So it's a cat and mouse kind of effect. 
The Jamaica Constabulary Force remains steadfast in its mission moving forward. St. James Police will intensify operational activities to identify, apprehend, and bring to justice those individuals who contribute to violence and instability in our communities. The state of emergency was declared following several murders, including the death of these two students in the parish. On November 6th, seven-year-old Justin Perry, nine-year-old Nakalvia Smith, Nakalva Smith, both students, the Tevin Hale and Tevin Hale, otherwise called Bank Bansell, he was 26. Those were the three victims who were shot and killed in the taxi. There's a long list of others right here. Others that were killed, which I don't want to go uh, through. It's a long article in the newspaper with all the names and stuff of everybody that lost their lives there. It, it doesn't do us any good reading out the names, but that kind of policing, I don't want to say they're doing a bad job because it's your job. And, and I'll tell people this all the time too. Jamaican gunman them. It's not like foreign gunman, my friend. Foreign gunman see police and run with the gun in a them hand and get shot in a them back. Or them fling with them gun and run. Very few times I've been in, uh, from all the years I've been in the US, I've seen gangster, street man, gunman confront police and shoot out. The people that normally do that are the people that do those mass shootings like one psycho somebody come with one rifle and 10 magazine, 30 rounds a piece and mud up the place or a 100 round drum and a kill off people and then turn the gun on themselves or on the police. That's a different circumstance. The people who um, run street, call themselves gangster. In the US, they run from police or try to get away or when they're cornered, they surrender. Jamaica is a different ball game. See, we have a whole heap of people, right, that have made up their mind that me not got prison, you know. So you see, any West part, them buck me up, and that's why it pop off. Meaning, they're ready, really, really ready to die. I know we see the ones that talk tough till police hold them, then them beg. Officer, Jesus Christ, officer, may I beg you a chance, no? May I beg you a chance, you know? We see those. But what you don't see are the ones who do challenge these police officers in a shootout. And sometimes them shoot out and get away. A lot of the times, though, they shoot out and they die. So the police don't have any control over that. If they're going to pick up a suspect based on intelligence and it says this is the person who was the trigger man or this is the person who was, um, who knows where the trigger man is because him, I am right on man, something like that. They can't list him as the trigger man. They could list him as a person of interest. You see? But when they go for him, him panic and start shoot. The police can't do anything but shoot back, engage him. And he ends up dead. We end up with one of these kind of stories where kind of not solved. It's not solved. Anyhow, moving right along. I wanted to talk to you all about something this morning, which I think I want to leave for last. And that's um, to briefly touch on. My Jamaican people say, why fit a brief there? <laughs> nah, touch pan a brief, dog. To, to, to touch on shortly, did y'all notice? Did y'all notice the uh, influx of lawsuits? Skip with me now. Leave Jamaica. Come over see, seas for a minute. Skip with me now. Leave Jamaica. Come overseas for a minute. When Cassie, when Cassie rolled up on Puffy and got her lawsuit settled in less than 24 hours, what did I say? The floodgates are open, right? There's going to be a whole lot more, right? Okay, watch this. More lawsuits. More lawsuits. Did Cassie open the floodgates? These are my footnotes for you this morning, right? Macy's, Macy's has decided, you know, Macy's normally has the 
Thanksgiving Day Parade, all this other stuff. Macy's was one of them places when I was growing up. You walk in there and you hear uh, Code 9 in uh, 27 Blue. Code 9 in 27 Blue. And any part you go in the store, that's what you hear. Code 9 in 27 Blue. It wasn't until years later I realized that they were actually telling their security team to keep an eye on us. Because Macy's was one of them places there where it was opulent to shop. It wasn't just the regular round the way thing. Anyhow, Macy's had decided that they want to drop Puff Daddy's clothing line. They want to phase it out. I think they've been carrying it since 2001. Suddenly, they decide that they want to phase it out of their inventory. And when asked why, does it have anything to do with the allegations? They said, nah, it's just, it hasn't been selling like in the early 2000s, 1999, around that time. That don't make no sense. It don't make no sense because if it wasn't selling like how it's been, was selling in 99, 2000, it wouldn't take you 20 years to realize it wasn't selling. That was a dumb business decision then, if that's the case, right? Obviously, it is what it is, right? There's a drink company. I forgot what the name of the drink is, the cognac, or is it champagne, whichever one. Anyways, Puffy and them been going back and forth with it. Puffy is heavily invested in that. They've now used this to go back to the drawing board and put out a public statement saying they don't want him to be the face of the brand. It's not Ciroc. Ciroc, I think, is all his. It's something else. It's another drink. Ciroc is all his. He has the, the lion's share of Ciroc, so he'll make the lion decision. Cavesia, De Leon, I think it's De Leon. I, I'll have to look it up. I think it's De Leon, though. But they, they're they like, um, we no, we don't want him to be the face of the brand. Where do you think that's coming from? They made it clear that, yes, it has something to do with these allegations. Not a healthy business decision. So for all the people who thought backlash wasn't going to come from all that, Harvey Pierre. Harvey Pierre is... I mean, back in the day, he was Puffy's, like, best friend, right-hand man, everything. They were roommates in college together. Bad Boy Records, Entertainment, Bad Boy, the whole company. He was actually the president of Bad Boy. He just got hit with a lawsuit for the same thing. Hold up. Jamie Foxx just got hit with a lawsuit. For the same thing. The details. The details of Jamie Foxx's lawsuit is out. Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy Iovine, Interscope, 50 Cent, Eminem. Jimmy Iovine got a lawsuit on the table for him too. Yeah, Karen noticed. I just said Jamie Foxx. But I'm about to go into Jamie Foxx's um, details of his. Ross, it's... Man, listen... Cuba Gooding Jr. Now, Cuba Gooding Jr. just settled his lawsuit, a similar lawsuit. And as soon as he did that, he did the same thing that Puffy did. He settled his lawsuit out of court, like two days before a trial was supposed to start. Cuba Gooding Jr. has another lawsuit. And this time, it's from two women. Wow. Check it. Bill Cosby got a new one again. Y'all didn't forget Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears. Ari Spears, the comedian, Tiffany Haddish. Right. So... The Jamie Foxx lawsuit, right? Check it. I I don't know, man. I don't know. Jimmy Iovine. Jimmy Iovine is not, by the way, is is not um he's not black. So 
It's not all black men, but it's majority black men. They coming for it. They coming for that. The, the precedence was set when when Cassie got hers settled so quick. The precedence was set, and I and I knew that they were coming. Jamie Foxx is being accused of a rooftop sexual assault that allegedly happened eight years ago in New York City. Eight years ago. According to the lawsuit obtained by TMZ Fox was at Catch NYC and Roof in, in August of 2015 around 11 p.m. Chilling. When the plaintiff arrived to be seated in the rooftop lounge and bar. She says that she noticed Jamie Foxx, who was one table away from her, having drinks with Eric Marlin Bishop. Around 1 a.m., the plaintiff's friend asks Jamie if, you know, he's a star. You mind if we take a picture? You mind if you take a picture with my friend? This is what she said. Jamie says, sure, baby. Anything for you. And he seemed intoxicated at the time. She claims that he took some photos and then he commented and said, wow, you have that supermodel body. You smell so good. And told her she looked like Gabrielle Union. <laughs> Jane Doe, as she's listed, claims that Jamie Foxx then pulled her by the arm to the back area of the rooftop where he allegedly placed both hands on her waist moved them under her top and started rubbing her breasts. She claims that he attempted she attempted to step away and then she noticed that a security guard and others who saw what had happened but they chose to walk away and not do anything. In the documents, the plaintiff claims that Jamie Foxx then allegedly slid his hand into her pants and put his fingers on and in her vagina and her anus. She says her friend came over there and saw what was happening, and then Jamie stopped touching her. She claims that she was injured and had to undergo medical treatment and suffered pain and suffering and emotional distress as a result of this sexual assault, abuse, assault, and battery, she's suing Jamie Foxx. She's suing Jamie Foxx, and she's suing whatever companies he's attached to for compensatory and punitive damages. According to this news house, they reached out to her, reached out to her attorneys, and nobody answered them back. That, that didn't, I don't want to victimize a victim, but that doesn't even sound realistic to me. That doesn't even sound real. You're a woman, right? You ask a man who's, who's famous, right? You're like, oh my God, that's Jamie Foxx, girl. Hey, let me go try to take a picture with him. Karen, come on, let's go. And your friend goes and goes, hey, Ken, you mind if you you want to take a picture with my friend? We really admire you. You're Jamie Foxx. You're so one of the coolest people we've ever known. And she's like, he's like, sure, come on. Hand goes undershirt and starts squeezing breasts, grab arm and pulls to a corner, down in pants and fingers, booty and pum pum are off a one go. And, and you're doing what? At this point, you just going? Where is the side of the story that says, I fought like hell? We were struggling. Drink glasses were flying everywhere, bottles. I left a lot of scratches on him. I slapped the shit out of him when he touched me. Where's that part of the story? I mean, damn. At some point, man, I'm telling, yo, I'm telling, listen, when you see stars, celebrities, 
public figures, persons um, who are seen as public figures, when you see them act a certain way, it's because of this. You could easily be caught up. Somebody come over and say, oh, man, we I watch you all the time. Never thought I'd get to meet you, bro. Give me a hug, man. And it's a girl, right? Give me a hug. And you just in the moment go and embrace the person. I'm hugging a fan. And two weeks later, I was traumatized. I asked for a hug. I told him I watch him all the time. I was wearing a, a crop top and a little skirt. And next thing I felt was his finger in my vagina out of nowhere. That's why you wave and keep it moving. Pound fist from a distance and, and keep going. Like, And some, some of them, they they just travel with security and don't even bother with people. Because it, it could get like that real quick. I'm not up here to say the woman is lying. I'm just saying it doesn't sound believable to me. To me. And that's just for me. Now, the funny thing that's going on today is this, right? Anybody can tell a story about you and everybody will run with the version that sounds like somebody was hurt. Somebody was abused. Somebody was molested. Somebody was touched against their will. They'll go with that because once you have that stigma on you, it's time to tear that person down now. Uh, like somebody said in my comment section, Puffy is a demon. Puffy is a this, he's a that, and they call some nasty names in the comment section. And I said, I will not be held liable. I can't say those words about him because I don't know anything along those lines. That case never went to court. It was never proven that he was from any accusations, right? He made a business decision to settle a case before it got too far because you see all the ramifications that comes with it. Being in this position behind this microphone right here, I could be held liable. If I start going around saying, oh, man, he's the worst thing ever. He's a this, he's a that. All him and his attorneys have to say is, why are you slandering this man? What proof do you have that he is this that you're calling him? Why are you reinforcing a lie that was told on him when we told you already that it was a complete lie? He still says it's a lie. He just chose to settle for whatever other reasons. You know where that's going to leave me? Sitting out in the middle of the ocean in a little boat with no paddles. Because I don't have any proof. I don't have any proof. And once you can't prove what you've been saying about somebody. See, if I could go to court, right? And they're like, I'm suing the, I'm, I'm going to sue the pants off of you. I say, take me. We go to court. I pull out my envelope. I pull out some pictures. I say, Your Honor, you see this picture right here? Okay, ask him how old that girl is in that picture. Because she's sitting right over here. She was 14 in that picture. She had on makeup and a weave and a weave and all that, but she was a child. Yeah, so when I call him a child molester, it's because I have proof. If you can't pull out no damn proof like that, you can't be up here talking about people and putting these um putting these labels on their name like that. It's a dangerous game to play, right? Cassie is a psychology major. She knew exactly what she was doing with Puffy. She was no victim, says Lulu Ridges. Here's my thing again. She never asked for, this is not beating up Cassie. I'm talking about what I observed and what stuck out to me. I'm not saying her story is false. I'm not saying it's true. I'm not even talking about her story. I'm talking about the vibe I got from what I thought would have been done but wasn't done. She never asked for justice. She never asked for, like I remember uh, Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. When Harvey Weinstein was going through his situation and all these women... Right now, if you go Google and look up all the women who um, are Harvey Weinstein list of victims, you will see a big collage of many faces 
Many of them are famous faces that you know. None of those people said they wanted money. None of them. They were outspoken. They said, I want jail time for him. I want him to go to prison. I want him to lose all his shit that he has. I want his name to be out there as this kind of person because this is what he did. I want him to be fully exposed. In that case, with Puffy and Cassie, I want $30 million. Or I'm writing a tell-all book and I'm putting all your secrets in there. And I'm telling everything about both of us and what we went through and and how you used to do this to me and that to me or whatever. That's a shakedown. That's a shakedown. It's like, but again, like I said, at the end of the day, she was also an artist that was signed to Puffy. And there are a lot of artists that were signed to Puffy whose careers ended badly. But he's the only one that's still surviving and living wealthy. You know what I'm saying? So, And, and if you listen to them talk, because they're out there, 112 and all of them, they're out there. They made videos and put them on social media. That's where I get the information from. He has all our publishing. He has all our this. He didn't pay us no more than that. We've been broke for the longest. We've been struggling. He's living high off our publishing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I said, Cassie probably came for the money because she looked herself in the mirror and said, man, how did I miss? I had the looks. I had the voice. Or I had the whatever it was that was supposed to help me to make it there. I had all the connections. Come on, I was dating the head honcho owner of Bad Boy Records. Still couldn't make it because he used me. So since you used me like that, and I didn't make the millions I thought I could have made off of my career, I got secrets for you, and I know they could tarnish you. Give me this much. Cut a check. I'll go about my business. You don't cut the check. I'm going to get that check out of a best-selling book because I know if I write everything in a book about you, it's going to sell. You're Sean P. Diddy Combs. And he's like, you know what? I got too much going on right now. I can't do that. And I don't want all that going out there anyways, whether it's true or not. So, hey, I deny everything that she is saying. Let's settle this behind the scenes and get it out the way. Cuba Gooding Jr. did it. Cuba Gooding Jr. was going to court every day, getting ready. They're picking the jury. They're getting ready to set him up to start trial. I think it's a day or two days before trial date start. Nobody shows up to court. I'm watching it. I'm waiting for the trial to start because I want to hear the details come out in court. There won't be a trial. I said, damn, out of nowhere? So why'd you go through all that? There won't be a trial. There won't be a trial. Settled. It's been settled amicably behind the scenes, and that's that. There's a lot of people right here. And I think that this list is going to also get longer. Yep. Hi, sugar. <laughs> you come get daddy? Uh-huh. You said daddy, it's time to get off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Say hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Say I'm protecting my hair with my bonnet. I'm protecting my hair with my bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, y'all be careful out there, man. I was just coming to vibe for a one hour this morning. We end up here from until 10 o'clock. That's good. We'll leave it right where it's at right now. We got a lot more to talk about, but we'll do it on a different day. Yeah. Definitely we'll be here tomorrow morning. See, so tune in and tune in early, and we're gonna go long. Have a wonderful day. Happy Thanksgiving to the people who don't have it in any which way, whether you don't have people or you don't have resources. Um, I, I feel for you, you know, but give thanks, though. Manners and respect to each and everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow right here. God spare my life. Walk good. Be good. I'm out. Peace. You want to say bye bye, mommy? Come say bye. Say bye to the people. Bye bye to the people.
Bye. Bye bye to the people. <laughs> Say bye bye, people. Bye bye, people. People. Come say bye, babe. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. See, I press this button right here. What is that? And this one right here. Oh. And they go bye bye.